I'm John Oliver. Just time for a quick recap of the week. And we begin in Brazil, the country with the second most valuable Amazon on Earth. <laughs> Brazil is facing numerous problems right now, from the Zika virus to a struggling economy. And this week, it was plunged into political turmoil. Hundreds of thousands of Brazilians are taking to the streets all across the country, calling for the impeachment of their president, Dilma Rousseff. People here are saying they're tired of being lied to, and they're particularly tired of this very deep economic recession that the country is in. Yes, the protesters want to forcibly remove their president. And as Brazilians know well, you don't want to remove something slowly and methodically. You want to do it quickly all at once. <laughs> the, the Brazilian legislature is moving to impeach President Rousseff, although they may not be in a great position to judge, given that 60% of them face criminal charges of some kind, ranging from electoral fraud to homicide. <laughs> and think about that. The Brazilian legislature potentially contains 40% fewer criminals per capita than the Brazilian prison system. <laughs> but Rousseff's latest trouble concerns her predecessor, Lula da Silva, and his connection to the ongoing investigation into bribes and kickbacks at Petrobras. Brazil's state-run oil company. And incidentally, is there ever a state-run oil company that is not corrupt? <laughs> the only two words that are more inherently suspicious than state-run are oil company. <laughs> but but Lula, Lula da Silva, Lula da Silva is facing charges connected to Petrobras. And while he claims they were politically motivated, Rousseff didn't exactly calm things down this week when she made a surprise staffing choice. Former President Lula is now going to be serving as chief of staff for Dilma Rousseff, the current president. If he is in the cabinet, he is protected from pro uh, prosecution uh, by anyone except the highest court in Brazil. Wow. He virtually has immunity. That does not look good. And it says something about what some protesters think of Lula, that they already had a giant inflatable effigy on hand the second the move was announced. But but this was just the beginning of a bewilderingly dramatic few days there. First, a Brazilian judge nullified the appointment, then a judge from a higher court nullified that nullification, and then things got crazy. As soon as President Rousseff got an injunction overturned against Lula being appointed to her cabinet, at least 20 other judges across the country filed their own injunctions to block him from taking the post. That's right. The judiciary is now in open revolt against the executive branch. And not just that, but huge pro-Rousseff and Lula rallies took place on Friday. And let's all please enjoy this brief moment of feeling superior to the political chaos of Brazil. Because it's exactly how the rest of the world will feel this summer, watching the Republican Party tear itself apart, denying the person who got the most votes their nomination. So, for now, let's move on.